You don't have to crank too hard. Whispers tweet nothing. He's in your ear. Oh, hey, this is not the episode. This is not our ASMR edition, guy. <laughs> Remember, that's what Patreon's for. It's always an ASMR episode. Only for those that pay attention, Nicholas. I just think it's funny that you said that this doesn't make like noises on the mic. No, that does right there. I hear it. No. <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot of noise, Nick. <laughs> There's a distinct difference. Oh wait, I need to add a new. Hey, you know what? I've got a. I got a new thing that I got to add, Nick. I got a new thing. You want to? You are you curious about it? I'm very curious. Oh well. Here it is, dude. This is the new, a sexy. Oh yeah. The seemingly ASMR edition of Nick. Get it. In- <laughs> Here we go. That was gorgeous. Did you did you see that? Did you I see did. the did you see the fresh face at the end of that one? Yeah, I saw it in the last episode. I know, but those were in post. This is live. Oh, okay. So it's okay, been okay, it's okay. been added. It's just, if it's the same as what you saw last week, then I've I've updated it. Nice. I've, nice, I've updated nice, the nice, live nice. version of that one. So now Ryan Coon, our dear host who's not here tonight, is in the intro now. Nice. And Nicholas, I must say that this is the strongest cup of coffee I have sipped thus far. Nice. And but it's coffee not... instead of alcohol, so I think this will go better than usual. Shh. What? <laughs> You're not wrong, sir. You're not wrong. <laughs> hey, I'm just glad to be here. And I'm glad you're here. You know what? Let's make quick work of the intro because it's just you and me today, shall we? We shall. Guys, welcome to your nerdy essentials. <laughs> Did you forget the episode? Welcome to Nerdentials, your weekly dose of the nerdy essentials, covering film, TV, video games, and comic books. I'm your host, Joe Tweeten, and joining me side by side. Tonight is my illustrious counterpart, my co-op buddy for life, the Nick Thomas. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here. Um, thank you for being I, here. I'm, we're missing some people, but that's okay. We will we, carry on. We are. And if 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 the wily redheaded ginger decides to poke his head in mid episode, I'll let him through because. Uh, I, I often I miss him. I just I think his um, soulless ginger hair brings some levity to the episode because of his lack of a soul. I I think he compensates in personality because of his lack of a soul. Does that make sense? It does. It does. But it does. it's it's nothing to slight them for not making it. Um, no, family and lives have to come first. This no. is just a hobby that we hope that someday it might be something more, but apparently no one cares. I mean, what? Ah, uh, Nick shamelessly plugging away to the charitable folks out there. <laughs> yeah. well, well, we hope so. Let's get some quick housekeeping down real quick, uh, Nick, because some, something that a long time listeners or new listeners might not be aware. Um, friends, if you have stumbled upon our show rest assured here are the deeds we're a podcast but we're also a video based podcast so if you're hearing this visually if you're sorry <laughs> nice nick nice uh, drinking more of that healthy shit yes you are this is actually a hard seltzer oh switching it up tonight not bad because All it's right. alcohol that i can have that doesn't go against my diet hey Whatever helps, whatever helps you enjoy what you can enjoy. And in this case, it's a healthy direction. So, bravo, sir. I've lost 20 pounds in a month. 
Hell yeah, dude. Good job. I'm down two full pant size. Dude. Yeah. That's that's amazing. Um let's circle back to that, dude, because I, I love that. I, I would love to Function. share back and forth a little bit, but um uh, real quick to to new and old listeners, guys, if you're if you uh, ha- have not noticed, our YouTube channel has changed as far as the podcast is concerned. If you're watching this podcast on YouTube, it means you found the new channel. If you guys are unaware, we have a main channel called Nerdentials Gaming. It used to be the homeland for all our content, but we decided to split things up a little bit. Um, so that if you just want your pop culture news and, and reviews, go to Nerdential's podcast. That's the channel. It's links are everywhere. You guys will find it. I promise. Um, but we are continuing to pump away co-op games, solo walkthroughs and first look series on the gaming channel as well. So if gaming entices you go over there. Um, and I unironically, tonight's episode or this week due to a lack of hosts tonight we're um just going to focus on one of the biggest news topics of probably all of 2022 at least for uh video gaming i guess we could probably categorize it as because there might be movie news later that's insane i'm sure there will be or even some tv shows that are insane over the next you know 12 months uh, we're just now getting to the end of January, literally the end of January here, and um, the biggest news to come out of this early in January is video game based. Yeah. So now, Joe, before you get any farther, yeah, um, we're not we're not segueing yet. You want to yeah. say something before we jump into that? Well, I don't know if you want to keep this in there, but I had actually been thinking about something about our podcast. Yeah, go on. Um, I would like to go to the future. And Ooh. embrace and embrace the past. So, what we've been doing for the last couple of years, we have our variety hour show, right? We cover things we watch, things we like, things that are out and about, and mm-hmm. things we play. Um, it's always reviews, it's always trailer reviews, reacts, stuff like that. Yeah. So we have our gaming bits, we have our movie matters, we have our our TV talks. Um, I I, I just thought of the name for uh. For uh, uh, comic books, if we ever cover that, the comic corner. Yes, well, I okay, yeah, mm-hmm. I but know. I was we actually meant, thinking, yeah. what if we bring back something from the days of yore, oh, the no. beginning of time of Nerdentials, the and Nerdentials when we cover, time. yeah, and mm-hmm. when we cover big, big topics, big pieces of news, Ooh. nerdy news. Mm-hmm. Go on. I think, we should, I, think we should, I think we should bring back Nerd News and Brews. Oh. Oh, sir, you are you are talking dirty to me right now. It's it's not unknown to any followers that have been watching us over the last five years. We do partake in general spirits and various <clears throat> hey. Oh, sorry about that. No, you are fine. Your dog is being lively on this show tonight. All good. All good. We love yeah. animals. But he was, hey, he was yeah, sleeping I'll, and all of a sudden, oh. uh, he was startled by your nerdy conversation. Maybe he wants to join. But am I the only one that thinks it sounds like a good idea? No, you're not wrong. Um, I've discovered a few podcasts that have done similar things. And you know what? Let's let's uh, cruise in the same direction we've been going and explore that avenue as the following couple months unfold. Because um, me, myself, and I, and my three kids and wife, <laughs> and four cats, are going to be making a pretty dramatic move in the next three-ish months. We're going to be going from the West Coast to the Midwest. Um, shout out to Brahan. Be a little bit closer to that boy. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, but, <laughs> but I know, I know. We might have to do some collaborations when I get closer to uh, the, uh, that. But anyway, um, but what I'm saying is like we're the podcast isn't stopping anytime soon. We're going to keep trucking along. We're going to keep putting them out as often as we can. Weekly is the goal. Always has been. And um, 
I'm going to have hopefully a more lockdown schedule this coming week. Uh, this coming week, I'm trying to switch things around where I'm at. And then hopefully by summertime, I'll have a something very steady where we got we can keep putting out podcasts for you guys out, out there in the ether. Uh, Nick, love the idea. Yeah, Comic Corner. Uh, it's one of the four topics I uh, introduce in every episode. And while a lot of our pop culture revolves around comic book origin and and backgrounds it's not often that that's actually the focus the comic book itself the publication itself and i definitely think it's an aspect of our nerdy conversation that is definitely missing and has we have been. covered it a few times we have but i think it should at some point soon maybe this year will be the the year we do it become a permanent staple of our topics absolutely like an entire actual ed- episode dedicated to it, just like our other three topics. I think at some point we definitely need to do that. But guys, um, we won't bury the lead any further. Uh, anyone that enjoys our length of conversation and anyone that's new, timestamps well are down below so that you can get to where you want to go sooner than later. But uh, if you're not clicking on those, thanks for joining us for all the conversation we do have. Uh, Nick? I think, huh, without further ado, we should probably, you ready? Should, you ready to uh, segue? Let's get to a wrong thing. No, you're not wrong. This is Gaming Bits. We can still use that. Nick, let's get to it. To it. <laughs> Ah, not cheesy at all. But, friends, welcome to Gaming Bits. If we didn't announce it before, guys, this is going to be episode 118. And you know what, Nick? This is kind of going back to back. Granted, we skipped a week, unfortunately, but our last episode. Do you know what we talked about? And do you know how it correlates with the episode number? Uh, Do you recall? What was yeah. the big game we reviewed at the end that every one of us played? Episode 117. We uh, talked about a little game called Halo. Dude, that was unplanned, and I didn't even mention it while we were recording. Like, I can't believe I didn't I didn't think about it while we were talking about Halo Infinite. The fact that the, the flagship Master Chief's designation is 117... And on episode 117 of our podcast, we were covering that game. Yeah. Speaking, of I just want to throw that out there. Just no, no. Out there. Speaking yeah. of that game, uh, it kind of harkens me back to the origins of that game, the original oh, creators of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you realize that. Uh, that we're going to talk about uh, t- two huge things. I don't know if we should lead with this or if we should leave with the, the former. Um, I think this is so, so new that it, since it happened today, I think okay. we should actually talk with this. Okay. This is good. I'm, this and actually you're right. go from there. But no, you're right. I'm, we're going to drop this episode, hopefully tomorrow, Tuesday. Yeah. That's my, my idea. So hopefully no, you guys but, are hearing this on Tuesday. Um, yeah. But yeah, Nick, go ahead. C- keep leading on. No, yeah, you know, coming out of this, uh, episode one one seven, talking about John Spartan and Halo, um, we uh, the original creators, the original creators of that, Bungie, um, a back in those that, days, they were partnered with Microsoft for um, a ten year contract to yeah. push out that whole Halo franchise. Right, they came out with a game that we all fell in love with. Um, uh, during their split, um, Microsoft retained Halo as their property, which was, I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing for Bungie, but I think they kind of just washed their hands of it. But I'm I, f- I, f- I feel like even if they didn't want to, I feel like they they were ready to move on to the next thing, which, mm. which when we get into that right now, well, I think we'll kind of see it based on how long they have stuck with their the 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 second thing they got into after halo right mm-hmm. that yeah, yeah, yeah. that that was more of a blessing than anything because they <laughs> they wanted a different story yeah. they wanted to nope. tell a different story 
Yeah. No, uh, Bungie has had a just as a t- tumultuous uh, adventure as uh, as John Spartan himself. Um, ups and downs and allies and enemies and all these yeah. things. Um, Bungie went on its way and formed an, a game that we also love, uh, Destiny. Um, yep, and yeah. that was, uh, and they also they fell into a, a second a second contract with another publisher at the Activision. time known as Activision, Activision yeah. themselves. Yeah, which which we'll be talking about a little later this episode, but. Yeah. No, Activision took a weird turn with them, and it they led to some... spent was that another ten another ten year yeah. type deal, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, uh, I think it was supposed to be a ten year deal, but they got out of it early because they felt that Activision was dropping the ball on it. Mm-hmm. No, there were some things happening, and they were able to get out. Um, yeah, it was earlier. breaking of contract because of their inability to fulfill their side of it, which was good for ba- Bungie to be able to get out of it. Because um, they were, yeah. I could honestly say, as someone who has played uh, Destiny since the inception, um, they were just, running uh, the game into the ground. I was going to say, let let's not sugarcoat this or or leave all context out. But let's point out, and although I have stepped away for a while, um, me and Nick both have over fifteen hundred hours in the game. Uh, individually nick has a few hundred more than me um shout out to brahan i i will let him i will let him divulge his own personal <laughs> life life expectancy at, at on what he's put into that hundred hours into that game it puts me in the top three yeah. percent i felt yeah rather yeah. rather uh accomplished Times- by that out of out of the total community of players and time spent in that game so that's definitely like no small feat it's also no small indication of how loved this game is by its hardcore following no um but after their departure from activision they went on to do their own thing and they I went feel they've gotten their game yeah I mean, they, they went very, they, they've they been multi-platform, but once they went independent from Activision, they spread their wings out a little bit. Not they, just multi-platform, they went cross-platform. That's, yep, that's where I was leading yeah. to, is that they went full-blown cross-platform with multiplayer, mm-hmm. something no hardcore fan back in its inception ever imagined would happen, and here we are. Um, and, and then, this, and this then Microsoft brings... Microsoft made a little bit of an offering to get it on Game Pass for free. Yeah, with their whole new light thing. So they were trying to go for a free to play setting, is mm-hmm. what Bungie finally got to. And it was kind of a nice nice partnership without them jumping in bed with another people. They just said, "Hey, let's work together." Yeah, we, yeah we without getting games. locked down, we're willing mm-hmm. to let you put it on here. Um, let's let's. They were. I, I feel they were courting them. Yeah. Oh. But, yeah. They've they've been trying to. Uh, Phil Spencer from Microsoft has been a um an unabashedly uh, fanboy of Destiny. He he doesn't shy away from admitting that he's put many hours into that game himself. Yep. So, but that brings sense us to to the this week's news. news that made my jaw drop so hard that I could not believe it happened. As of this morning, Sony, Sony announced that they are purchasing Bungie for $3.6 billion. Which I didn't know what Bungie was valued at, and apparently it's there. And granted, they're just a single developer, you know, compared to other They have one of the highest played games in the world right now. I that's I know, and that's why their value is where it's at. It's it's pretty nuts. And coming up to the 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 Witch Queen, the the people getting onto this game are just increasing and increasing. Yeah, yeah, the newest expansion coming up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, it's nuts. Uh, but no matter how worried I am, no matter how scared I am, I did read into some stuff. Uh, part of the the agreement for the the purchase of Bungie. Is that they will remain a uh, a private party 
they they, in, they will independent be part, developer. Yeah, they will be in, they will be an independent developer, meaning that they could publish what they publish is not controlled yeah. directly by Sony. Yep. Sony they gets to enjoy. Sony will enjoy profits from their mm-hmm. publications, but they're not going to directly control, as far as we know, Bungie's publication. So what it means by uh, Sony purchasing it is there's they're going to have the the rights to use the game's likeness. Um, we, so this could mean that Sony might put together a Destiny movie, Destiny thing, because that that's that's all within the things there because Sony yeah, has the rights now. Yeah, because Sony is also a movie studio. They have you know the rights to Spider Man and mm-hmm. other thing, uh, other things similar to that, where it makes them uniquely positioned to make films based on certain yeah. IPs. It also puts it in the ball court for them to do merchandise for it. So they can make mm. more money off of that. Um, yeah. But with them saying, hey, we're going to keep it multi-platform because everyone loves the game and we don't want to take that away from anybody. I have a little bit of hope there. But I could say right now with a shadow of a doubt, I spend an unhealthy amount of time in this game. And if it ever left Xbox, I probably would stop gaming. Yeah. Uh Sucks this, to hear that on the grand scheme of things, but like I get it. That's which is why I don't think Sony wants to jeopardize the player base uh, in that way. I think they're how much benefit. how much of my my gaming have I dedicated towards this game? <laughs> Fourteen, fifteen hundred hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I spend more time on this game than I do with my wife. She doesn't listen to this podcast, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> as far as we know. Uh, but yeah, dude, so I don't know, man. This is... um, The funny thing, though, is that this... this we we kind of are going to backtrack slightly um, in the next few minutes regarding this acquisition because this was i personally think this was a response um I, sony had I to make a know. big response i don't well and the thing is is that day um days several days after sony claimed they weren't they weren't worried or interested but i i don't doubt that this isn't isn't somewhat related to yeah. the the insane news that swept yeah. All across America and rather the world and the game industry as a whole uh, last week. We missed recording last week. Otherwise, this would have been the main topic of last week, what we're yeah. about to talk about. We, we um, talked about the other studio that we were just talking about just a few minutes ago. Yeah, Bungie originally, you know, being partnered with Microsoft at the time. And we've, we've been talking about Microsoft. Um, and a, f- a couple episodes back, we were talking about my just re- not too long ago, we were talking about Microsoft acquiring Bethesda Zenimax and how insane that was for eight billion dollars. I'm rounding up, but roughly eight billion mm-hmm. for that studio, which has a wonderful breadth of work. And and now Microsoft, who it, anyone that didn't know, their their net value right now in the market is, I think, over. Don't quote me, guys, but it's over three trillion dollars as a company. Trillion. Yeah. So yeah. when you yeah. talk trillion, and then you tar- start talking ten, twenty, thirty billion, you're like, oh man, that's pocket change to a company whose grand mass total is over in the trillions, mm-hmm. right? Yep. So, but but <laughs> going from you know, Sony billion. Person. Well, three, oh. yeah, almost four billion with Sony, four billion dollars buying an entire development company, you know, Bungie, and then previously Microsoft spending eight double what Bungie is for all of Bethesda and Zenimax. We get the wind a week and a half ago that Activision Blizzard, who is in itself. A publishing uh, machine and a money printing machine at that got swept right up for 69 point something billion, almost 70 billion dollars by Microsoft. Yeah. 70 billion. 
And I know this is kind of old news now, but I just we wanted 68. to give our thoughts. 68.7 billion in an so, all yeah. cash transaction. All cash. And because um I, we don't have all the articles pulled up right now, but um everyone that's been following or been a fan of Blizzard Activision, Activision Blizzard knows a lot of um the haze legally that they've been going through with their workplace, the lawsuits, their mistreatment of women in the workplace, uh, workers in general, crunch, all this is just constant heavy stuff going on in the industry as a whole, but no more, but no more so than Activision Blizzard has literally been lit a flame, including um, I think Bobby Kotick, the CEO mm-hmm. of Activision Blizzard, uh, there's so many lawsuits going on with that company. And uh, I've listened to like three, four podcasts. I want to give give shout outs to them. Just at, if you guys are listeners and don't listen to these other publications, they're very trustworthy. I listen to kind of funny gaming daily. A lot of hosts from that podcast are ex writers and hosts from IGN and IGN's podcast unlocked with Ryan McCaffrey covered it day one, their podcast released on Tuesday. And that morning that their podcast records is when that news dropped mm-hmm. freaking insane. Um, I listened to uh, gamer tag radio, one of the longest running Xbox based podcasts out there. I love those guys on there. They're uh, at episode 12, over 1200 episodes right now. Cause they've been going since 2005 with their podcast. Insane. Um, always covering all the latest. So just shout out to all those guys. That's where I got most of what I'm about to speak about. Cause I didn't pull up any articles for this conversation because we're a little late to talk about it, but we wanted to give our thoughts about this cr- the craziness going on with this. Go ahead. Yeah. Nick. <laughs> no, uh, it's, it's, it was definitely a response to everyone was waiting for. We were waiting to see how soon as a response, the, the news of Activision being bought out by uh, Xbox tanked sony stocks by 20 percent okay and on day one it was a 13 percent drop of yes sony itself like the uh-huh. moment that was announced it's like and stocks stocks are based off of public the pub the okay. general public that invests in it and no, i'm just talking telling our listeners that may mm-hmm. not be familiar you know um and and stocks can increase when a company's value is like tr- heavily trending. Like, oh, this company is going places. It's making big moves. People start investing in that. Or people start selling their stocks. They're like, holy shit, Microsoft just bought the company whose main publication and cash cow IP is Call of Duty. Holy crap. Microsoft just bought the developer that produces call of duty microsoft just bought it what are they going to do we saw what happened with bethesda so people start freaking out and stocks start going crazy some start dropping people start selling and um so uh, a couple things like we can fast track just to kind of clear the air a little bit about this is that microsoft like like their transaction with bethesda said that previous contracts previous uh phil spencer put it very eloquently he he said we don't want to take away these games from the communities that are already established Mm -hmm. and and he was he's always super diplomatic with his words especially Mm -hmm. in writing and a lot of that's for legal reasons but (laughs) we saw what happened with bethesda yeah you know okay um fallout 76 is that that's the mmo one right and then um you know fallout 76 and uh uh oh elder scrolls online those are multi-platform cross-platform full you know fully invested developed communities microsoft is not going to touch those but they sure as hell for future ips said guess what starfield their newest open world RPG that's sci-fi based it's different from any of the other ones is going exclusive and you know when when we talk about acquisitions you know Microsoft's not going to spend a billion dollars and then uh, keep things the way they are necessarily unless it makes sense for the industry 
No, uh, there is some things though that have been talked by uh, Phil Spencer, um, and there's some speculation yeah. that stuff like uh, the the new Elder Scrolls is going to mm. be Game Pass exclusive, not Xbox exclusive. Okay, he has, no, he has is... made a very he has ver- made very political statements, very PC statements, saying, "Hey, we aren't going to stop these from going on other consoles, but we will gladly have these produced for anywhere where Game Pass is accepted." Yeah, Microsoft so. is going for an ecosystem, mm-hmm. not console exclusive. And if you think about it, they've already reached out to Nintendo. Nintendo has been beta betaing uh, Game Pass for years. I know. Well, since it started, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, Nintendo, yeah. computer, Xbox, anything that can connect to an internet. They've been. Yeah. It's on mobile phones, Android, mm-hmm. Apple. On my own Mac computer that I edit stuff on, I'm able to play Xbox Game Pass through See, through cloud gaming. No, and Xbox can do the whole thing with taking these big companies because they have a ridiculous amount of subscribers that are paying $14.99 a month. They just announced in, in this, hold on, uh, Nick, um, I may, I'm going to maybe cut real quick or um, shorten this. up. we can keep talking while I pull it up. I want to, I, oh, I, and, I need to pull it up. The, the art, the exact, I want to read exactly what Phil Spencer said. I know everyone's talked about it already. Uh, you can keep talking. Nick. Go ahead. But we're, we're backtracking way too far. We're talking back to uh, Bethesda purchase. No, well, no, no. I'm going to read the statement he made about Activision Blizzard. Okay. That's, I'm not going all the way back. No, no, no. I just want to read the, here because I, I posted it today um, because the first thing in the morning when they posted live about the announcement, Phil Spencer wrote out a very nicely worded document on Xbox.com about, you know, what this means, basically. Hold on. Uh, Xbox.com. Here we go. Let me pull this up. Oh, did he uh, respond to Sony purchasing today? Oh no, no, no. I'm we, we're not covering that. I'm just backtracking just to the original purchase of Activision Blizzard, and this is what Phil Spencer wrote. Uh, did you read this yet? I don't know. Well, for 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 our listeners, I'll read it. So, Phil Spencer wrote on January 18th, 2022, at 5:25 a.m. This is when the news broke. He wrote. Creators of Call of Duty, Warcraft, Candy Crush, Tony Hawk, Diablo, Overwatch, Spyro, Hearthstone, Guitar Hero, Crash Bandicoot, StarCraft, and more join Team Xbox. This was like the headline. He writes, as a team, we are on a mission to extend the joy and community of gaming to everyone on the planet. We all know that gaming is the most vibrant and dynamic form of entertainment worldwide, and we've experienced the power of social connection and friendship that gaming makes possible. As we pursue that mission, it is incredibly exciting to announce that Microsoft has agreed to acquire Activision Blizzard. Over many decades, the studios and teams that make up Activision Blizzard have earned vast wellsprings of joy and respect from billions of people all over the world. We are incredibly excited to have the chance to work with the amazing, talented, dedicated people across Activision Activision Publishing, Blizzard Entertainment, Beanox, Demonware, Digital Legends, High Moon Studios, Infinity Ward, King, Major League Gaming, Radical Entertainment, Raven Software, Sledgehammer Games, Toys for Bob, Treyarch, and every team across Activision Blizzard. He is very specific to list as many as he could there. And then he continues, Until this transaction closes, Activision Blizzard and Microsoft Gaming will continue to operate independently. Once the deal is complete, the Activision Blizzard business will report to me as CEO, Microsoft Gaming. Hold the phone one second. Phil Spencer is dictating himself in this statement as being the CEO of Microsoft Gaming, Mm -hmm. and he is saying (laughs) Activision Blizzard and everyone that works under that will be reporting to him. (laughs) Whoa. Okay. Okay. Hold on, let's finish. Upon close, we will offer as many Activision Blizzard games as we can within Xbox Game Pass and PC Game Pass, both new titles and games from Activision Blizzard's incredible catalog. We also announced today that Game Pass now has, and this is where he points out their subscriber base, first, kind of the first time he's ever publicly announced their, their subscriber count. Game Pass now has more than 25 million subscribers. 
that's double what World of Cor- World of Warcraft topped out back in the day. Mm-hmm. The fantastic franchises across Activision Blizzard will also accelerate our plans for cloud gaming, allowing more people in more places around the world to participate in the Xbox community using phones, tablets, laptops, and other devices you already own. Activision Blizzard games are enjoyed on a variety of platforms, and we plan to continue to support those communities moving forward, like the MMOs that are already established. Call of Duty Warzone, that's probably not going to go anywhere. It's an established, you know, open world thing on multi platform and it's cross play. He finishes by saying, as a company, Microsoft is committed to our journey for inclusion in every aspect of gaming among both employees and players. We deeply value individual studio cultures. We also believe that creative success and autonomy go hand in hand with treating every person with dignity and respect. We hold all teams and all leaders looking at you, Bobby Spitaki. forgot. <laughs> we, yeah. We hold all teams and all leaders to this commitment. We're looking forward to extending our culture of proactive inclusion to great to the great teams across Activision Blizzard. Around the world, there is no more exciting venue for fun and connection than video games. And there has never been a better time to play than right now. As we extend the joy and community of gaming to everyone, we look forward to welcoming all of our friends at Activision Blizzard to Microsoft Gaming. Mm-hmm. And then he very quaintly posts... A little picture, and I'll I'll post this up on on the feed later. Uh, the gaming leadership of Microsoft with Phil Spencer sitting at the very tippy top, and then all the other leaders, including people from Bethesda, in in, in like the core leadership mm-hmm. group. Um, like, damn, dude, your 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 hot take to that whole thing. Go ahead. No, I I ad libbed a little bit in there to make a couple highlights. Yeah. No, I. There's a lot of things I'm excited for. Um, and the first things that come to mind are the big things. Um, you think, uh, when you think Activision, you think Call of Duty. You think, uh, you take, think Blizzard side of it. You think all of the Diablo, StarCraft, Warcraft, all those things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's mm. not where this is going to get a boon. Uh, where this is going to go crazy for all the Game Pass players is all the titles that have been long forgotten. Oh yeah, stuff that hasn't been Dude, yeah. active. In I a got a list minute. here. Uh, yeah, go yes. ahead. We haven't seen StarCraft in a while, but that's one that I'm hoping to see something on. Yeah, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, no, King's Quest. Yeah, if Phil Spencer even tweeted uh-huh. about King's Quest, he's like, "Hell yeah, let me see uh, some King's Hero? Quest again." Yeah, that's been dead for a little while. Mm-hmm. Um, here's one I'm actually really excited about. We we know Doom, we know we know Duke Nukem, we know all those. But there oh, was a yeah. game back in the day that was a first person shooter that hit me somewhere deep, and I miss playing. <laughs> I actually played it a while back on an emulator. Hexen. Oh, was an Activision title. Oh, you're pull you're pulling a, a deep mm-hmm. cut there, sir. Yeah, no, you, you start thinking about all these different things. And, dude, where yeah, we can Phil go Spencer with this. Was like the, he was saying the catalog. Like, yeah, yeah, it's not. there's so much more that's not hasn't been actively produced. Exactly. Crash Bandicoot was Activision. Yeah, and we only recently, we only recently got Crash Bandicoot on on Xbox. Like, uh-huh. re- only, re- only recently started getting newer yeah. titles from Crash Bandicoot. And now Microsoft has it. Okay, and Spyro, for a long Spyro. time. Yeah, no, uh, mm-hmm. PlayStation had Crash Bandicoot, Spyro, Tony Hawk. Those, those were all Activision. Those were, those were Sony mascots for so long. Like, it, it, people tied them together as being Sony mascot. Crash Bandicoot right. was a Sony exactly. mascot ad, uh, commercial. You would see commercials, the silly, goofy man in a gigantic Crash Bandicoot suit, and it was PlayStation. And that the little you know six thing they say at the end, dude. Okay, but um, and and a lot of speculations been going around, and a lot of a lot of professionals have said over some podcasts and articles I've read about the concern about, um, and I don't think it's going to stop. It's it's very obvious it's not going to stop anytime soon, but the concern for um, monopolizing, which they're not big enough in the in the market 
it, Microsoft's not big enough uh, amongst all the big companies to be considered a monopoly by making that acquisition. Not they yet. They are third. This acquisition puts them third in line behind Tencent, Sony, oh. and now Xbox. So yeah, they're still for- behind Sony. Oh yeah, and that's just that's gaming companies, and so but that's yeah. not like like that's not the big six that control all of media. Yeah, like all of media, like Disney, Apple, mm-hmm. those groups. Like it's still behind so these others that are just gaming based. Like Tencent is yeah. taking uh, they're from across the sea, but they're taking a heavy investment in gaming, and they haven't you know they're starting to. Um, I have a excerpt here to read from Phil Spencer too. Yeah, um, yeah, go for Spencer it. Spencer said the Xbox team. <laughs> We'll ta- talk with developers about working on a variety of franchises from Activision Blizzard's vaults, like we were just talking about a little bit ago. Yeah, yeah. Catalogs. This is exact search. We're hoping that we'll be able to work with them when the deal closes to make sure we have resources to work on franchises that I love from my childhood and that the teams really want to get. Spencer said, I am looking forward to these conversations. I really think it's about adding resources and increasing capability. So yeah, he's dude. even thinking about all those games that have just been the smaller Forgotten. ones that have been buried, they thrown in the closet. Buried, well, they've been put in the closet because Microsoft. I mean, um, sorry, Activision and bl- the 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 overall Blizzard, Activision Blizzard thing of it is that they've only been keeping the IPs alive that just gush cash, cash flow, and the whole reason that uh, tra- uh, Treyarch, Infinity Ward, and I think one other developer. Activision Blizzard has three company, three separate developing companies that are in tandem developing over a three-year course, and an, so that so that Call of Duty can have an annual release every year. And Asa, Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed suffered the same thing after after Assassin's Creed Unity, that was bugged to hell, and people raged about how broken that game was. Uh, Ubisoft made their studios take a break. They took almost a whole year off before coming back to what seems like an annual release again. But Call of Duty, the they, they have been forcing these three developers to, in tandem, keep working on the next Call of Duty so that they have an annual release. And guess what? The uh, the ND something or other, uh, whatever the sales projections are, like or the sales reports that you pull up online for physical copies sold... Um, and Sony and Microsoft have been including digital copies. And Nintendo still doesn't, for whatever reason. They only they only um, are calculating physical copies. But regardless, across the industry, Call of Duty is the hot Call of Duty that came out a month before the end of 2021. A month, mm-hmm. maybe November, but barely a month, was the highest selling game of the entire year. And it did that in less than 30 days in within that one month. Mm -hmm. That's stupid. That's stupid, disgusting. And of course they're not going to stop that cash cow. They've got a system. The thing about that too is (sighs) for the longest time, Sony actually made the statement. Sony is the home for call of duty. Oh yeah. People bought that. There are so many players out there that bought playstations just for the purpose of Call of Duty. Like, it's the only thing they play, right? And mm-hmm. and guess what? I read articles popping up this week saying that retailers overseas, I don't know about here, but retailers overseas are posting signs mm-hmm. in their windows for game gamers that come to their stores saying, warning, Microsoft bought Activision Blizzard, so choose your machine carefully. I was like, I oh, like what? Like, retailers are warning their customers be careful on choosing PlayStation or Xbox because guess what? Call of Duty is probably not going to be on there. I mean, gamers that know why they're getting what they're getting are getting it for the franchise they think they're getting it for, and now it there's that panic, which is why Sony stock dropped the week that this was announced. And bottom the, the thing, dude, the, the conclusion about Call of Duty, I want to say is that I think, like we said, open world shared communities like Warzone are probably going to stay there. Phil, like Microsoft, Phil Spencer, they're not stupid. They're going to keep them on those platforms because the one thing Microsoft did in the past, they when they bought Minecraft, one of the biggest transactions they ever made when they first started acquiring studios, 
they bought Minecraft and they kept it on every platform. They didn't suddenly make it exclusive because they are still making money by keeping all those communities alive. PC, PlayStation, Here's Nintendo. The thing. It's now on mobile. They own the company. They're still making money by the, that's what the I'm games saying. being sold and bought. And, and that, that's what I'm saying. They, Microsoft is still profiting by keeping it on those consoles. Now, but here's the thing. Remember, yeah. not too many years ago, we talked about how PlayStation was doing some shitty stuff and saying, hey, Activision, you have to make your games at this fidelity rate because our system can't do it. We don't want Xbox to look better. Yeah, I know. I, I remember the, the FPS capping. Uh, that can't freaking happen Destiny anymore. 2. Especially we don't have to worry about that. Day. Yeah, well, that, that, that's one thing. And, and like, um, I honestly, with these gigantic purchases, like Sony is not, Sony isn't freaking out capital wise. They're still ahead of Microsoft. They still have way more consoles from last generation PS4. They still have way more people that they've sold to than Microsoft prior, 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 prior. But here's I'm the saying, thing: uh, up to you this, say oh, PS4, on. no one knows that. Because Xbox hasn't released their games uh, council sales since 2014. But I don't know if the numbers have been posted there yet, but the one thing they ha- Microsoft has boasted is that the Series X is the fastest selling console out of every generation before. Which, I don't know what that means numbers-wise. It's still mind-blowing, well, yeah. but... It's, it's but- constantly out of stock. Well, I know, and well, and a lot of people, I, I would think, a lot of industry people understand the idea is the chip shortage is still a, a serious problem because of the pandemic. I still feel like there's an aspect I'm, of that that's true. I, I am an IT professional. There is not a chip shortage. Really, really, it's 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 a manufactured shortage to bring hype to the systems. Otherwise, my industry would be screwed. Because who uses chips more than consoles? <laughs> well, yeah, when PCs and cars, like when I for, when I financed my car a year ago, they said, "Yeah, we don't have a lot of newer models right now because during twenty twenty, the initial twenty twenty pandemic, there was a ship tor- shortage claim. There's chips, so like all new cars have chips in them. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, but regardless." Regardless, we're not talking about cars. Um, but the point, I, I guess, the point I wanted to move forward before we kind of get lost in the, the mist of the conversation um, is the f- here's the interesting thing. I, w- I want to see if you've thought about this or picked up on this o- during all this news, Nick. Um, Microsoft, tell me if you believe this uh, statement. Microsoft is not competing against Nintendo and Sony. Do you want to have first off? Long time. I know. And you know why I say that? They don't have to. No. They're playing Yes, they don't They're playing They don't have to. All the other I know. Com- uh, companies. That's right. that's where I want you to lead with this. Uh-huh. Where do you, where why? No, you tell me why. I everyone, know where my point is. Yes. Yeah, everyone else is trying to make their sales off of the sale of the system itself, sale of games, sale of accessories. Right. Xbox What's Microsoft has doing? flipped this. Microsoft has flipped the script and said, "You know what? Yes, we're going to sell our systems. We're going to anyways. It doesn't matter. Well, yeah, we're going to sell there. subscriptions. We are going A to be service. the Netflix. Yeah, we are going to be yes. the Netflix of gaming. Yes, and they are not. Yeah, they're not competing against Sony and Nintendo. They're actually competing." against google and amazon 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 yeah services they're competing against the big services because amazon has i think it's luna they have they have amazon has cloud gaming i think it's Uh called luna and and google Google. started started earlier on with google stadia (laughs) cloud gaming is garbage dude they're they're still they are still chipping away at trying to make it uh-huh. a thing, and I'm. But that's why that's where Phil Spencer's head is. Phil Spencer's head is, I, Microsoft's way bigger than Sony or Nintendo combined. They could if they wanted to, and I don't think they will because of monopolization. They could buy Sony. Microsoft, I got your next purchase for you, <laughs> Sega. No, I know, right? Or what? You know what? I, I don't. 
this is kind of dangerous. I don't know if they'd even be able to money wise, they could buy any of these things that I'm going to say, but as far as like what it means industry wise, I don't know if they will, but like they, they could buy EA if they wanted to. I know they have partnerships. Well, they, they have Ubisoft, a partnership with EA, them. They don't I, need to buy EA. Um, I know. I know. They, they think they would be better them. off uh, buying something because Xbox has placed themselves in a point of nostalgia. And I think mm. they should take that mm. route. So if if they buy I stuff they like are. Yeah. Sega and stuff like that, that what that draws nostalgia to us, they're yeah. going to get the older oh, yeah. gamers. Yeah. Oh no, absolutely. And you know uh, another company uh, that would be a, a two two companies I would love them to purchase, but I think it's very unlikely because of their previous relationship with Sony. I don't know how easily it would work out. Can you think of what I'm talking about? I'm going the Japanese route with these two companies. Uh, they bought, one they bought Activision. Okay, there was no company closer to Sony than Activision. Oh, okay, well, okay. There's there's two more that are that are not as big as that transaction. They're okay. more on the smaller scale. Thinking? They're single de- single developers. I'm thinking, thinking? Uh, even though they're multi platform, Square Enix would be a nice grab, but they have a lot of Final Fantasy love on the PlayStation side of the world. Square Enix, uh, you know, with that, that Miles Morales exclusive bullshit, the Spider Man game that's only exclusive to Sony, like that'd be a huge grab for Microsoft. But I don't know if they would go for that because they're such a they have such a tight relationship with Sony. Second company, and you, I want to get your thoughts on both of these companies. So Square Enix is one, Capcom, Resident Evil, my bro. There's more to Capcom than just that, but could you? You know, and they're fighting games, but like, holy shit, the whole Resident Evil franchise. Could you imagine day one access on Game Pass? I would freaking love that. That's just the dream, the you know, the consumer dream boy of me already subscribed to Microsoft. Would love to see those, but they have such heavy ties with Sony. I don't know if Microsoft would make that move or you or be able to. I don't know if they would be able to or if they would want to. What are your thoughts about those two? Uh, Square Enix, Capcom, what do you think? I don't think they're going and, to They uh, touch too many different is, things. Say that again. Uh, Capcom has been a heavy seller forever, and they will continue to be. And I doubt mm-hmm. they even need to sell their company. Now, when you look at stuff like Activision and stuff like that, the reason why they sold, honestly, oh. is because of the trouble they're in. They're in so much trouble. And that was another thing that so many people speculated is yeah. the biggest reason Microsoft stepped in is because they've had so much dirty laundry mm-hmm. over there uh, that it, 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 it was more beneficial to be sold off than to try to unbury yeah. themselves. People, people were bailing ship um, and those IPs were going to go down with the ship. Um, and yeah. Microsoft stepping in there. Thank honestly <laughs> saved all these IPs yeah. that we know and honestly love. and jobs thousands of people and the thing uh, one last bit about that transaction that i want to mention or talk about um that doesn't get talked about enough unfortunately is the workplace environment dude like i know we've both read articles we've heard all the crap that goes on you know in short sexual harassment um mistreatment uh general pay favoritism with pay and pay rates and stuff and that because you gotta we we all gotta realize and our listeners need to realize too that there are tens of thousands of people like you and me that go to work every day and work in a less than favorable and sometimes downright horrible uh environment and that's what all these lawsuits are are related to and there there's tons of articles all you gotta do is google search Activision Blizzard lawsuits, and you will find a list upon list of things that they're under fire for. Um, and I don't want to waste a whole lot of time on it, but I do think it's important to bring up. And I think, um, Nick, I want to point out that Phil Spencer has had a very hands-off approach with these acquisitions. He's mm-hmm. every of the 20 companies that they've acquired over the last two years, they have said, we're, they're going to be autonomous. They're going to keep working on what they want to work on. And Phil Spencer and Xbox are just there to give them resources. Be creative. Be the best developer you can be under our banner. Make your shit. Guess what? It's going to be under our banner. So 
We just want to spread your creativity to our player base. And it makes more money for Microsoft in the long run to do that. Uh, Activision Blizzard is one acquisition, especially for nearly $70 billion that I that we know for a fact. And it's in the writing. We read it that near the top where Phil Spencer said uh, right here. Uh, it said once the deal is complete, they'll report to him as the CEO. And it says that um, there, the whole statement about inclusion, community, culture, workplace culture, Microsoft being such a huge company has a gigantic head, you know, um, telescope on the lights on them same with apple same with uh, disney there's a gigantic microscope staring down the barrel of every one of these companies and everyone's looking at them as like are you treating your employees you know with dignity respectability the culture of the work environment and right now the activision blizzard culture is super a lot of people are calling are call it uh, uh i think college culture or something like we're Oh, it's it's not really bad if she's you know if if so and so's a little drunk, a little loose, not a big deal. You guys can bet, you know, no big deal, mess around. That whole idea that nasty culture in general that it's okay. We don't have to treat everyone equally, kind of that whole nasty idea. And it, it's been a huge deal. The whole Me Too movement in Hollywood started off a few years back as being such a huge thing, and now it's it's just all over the place in some of these gaming companies and my conclusion i was getting to is that phil spencer is very hands-off but um he's been very clear even in his diplomatic writing uh that they will respect the cultures but this is one culture of the industry that he's i don't see him leaving alone do you agree with that i agree 100 percent um They've said as much that Bobby Kotick uh, will stay as CEO of Blizzard Activision through the end of until the deal closes. Um, and, you know, as much as we'd love to hit to see someone nasty like him that just lets this crap slide and even him being involved in some of this stuff, he, he was found on the email list of freaking Epstein, the man who abused teenagers on a private island amongst mm -hmm. other freaking billionaires disgusting shit this guy is connected to and related to and it sucks he's gonna have a big payday and walk away on that freaking golden flag and he'll probably never be heard from again which is great the not hearing from him again part yeah man it just nope but <sighs> this might lead to a more healthy gaming environment absolutely because um, he will probably walk away you know what i mean or be have to walk away you know once the deal closes go he's, on nick i didn't mean to cut you off he's not gonna be walking away he's gonna be shoved out the door this they're like hey you're the reason why this place is failing we need you out we're not gonna have anything to do with you oh no absolutely da downside though is he has enough money to cover his ass that i don't see him behind bars oh unfortunately that's that's the part i meant that's the yeah sad part but the, yeah the benefit to this acquisition is we get that shithead out and phil spencer starts you know dusting the cobwebs off of yeah. this whole activision blizzard sony's baby activision with all the stuff that they grew up with is now microsoft and microsoft's baby that started with halo the thing that made microsoft gaming what it is is now sony this world is flipped upside down. Uh, I know, know. And what we started. I, I know, dude. And you're right. Like to, to now uh, a cur uh, curve tail back to the beginning of our podcast. Sony making their newest acquisition announcement while vastly smaller than the Blizzard Activision thing. It's still a, it is a small reaction. I, the, the, I don't. The know. console wars are over. We're not in the console wars anymore. We're no. in the purchase wars. Do you think? Do you think, or would you like to see 
uh, Sony PlayStation be more of a uh, a boutique console. You know what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying when I say that? No, I would. I would really so this... like to see Sony go back to the way it was. In what? In um, what unfortunately, way? Uh, well, I've said this before. You you may hear I, me yeah. uh, talk you, crap you were, about yeah, Sony all sorry. the time. I was a Sony fan way before I was ever an Xbox fan. Um, I yeah, I stood by Sony heavily, but. When they made the deal to get Blu-ray and make that their shining star and decide to say, you know what, we have Blu-ray, no one else has it. Let's let's just shove it down everyone's throat. Um, and they paid their way because Sony is also movie makers. Quite literally, they use their movie side to push the porno industry to push Blu-ray <laughs> to make it the go-to media for for high def DVDs. Yeah. Um, and, uh, it took the floor right out from underneath the Xbox and they're like, you know what? We got them where we want them. Now let's sell our system for 700 bucks. And then everyone's like, what? I'm like, well, if you want to watch Blu-ray, you have to do it. And we're like, this is yeah, shitty. No, Why would you do yeah. that? They quite literally went from the cost effective, uh, uh, gaming console that I knew and love of the from the generation, the golden age of JRPGs, stuff like Final Fantasy, Legend of Dragoon, all those things that were probably my favorite era of gaming to mm-hmm. the the people that were almost having a monopoly and knew it and said, you know what? We don't care about the gamers anymore. We want money. I want them to go back to believing in the gamers. Right. Believing in the yeah. games they put out. Yeah. And if they ever did that, I'd probably become a diehard Sony fan again. But yeah. because they quite literally made that whole turn to say, you know what? F the gamers. We want to line our pockets as much as possible. And well, during this whole thing, you look at you look at Microsoft, and Microsoft started there. And after that whole switch, they kind of made a point to, uh, to nurture small small uh, small publishers, small companies to, uh, to put out indie games. They were the ones that nurtured the the underside of the gaming community, the mm-hmm. the people yeah. giving them hands up to to get into places where they wouldn't have gone before. Mm-hmm. Um, and all these small studios that never had a chance now had a chance. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I believe that the community they built by doing that has enriched the gaming community. And that's one reason why I'm an Xbox fan right now. I, it's, it's something that I was glad to see happen, but again, yeah. the fall of PlayStation to their their deep seated desires led to me walking away, um, and that's what I mean by I want to see PlayStation go back to the way it was. I want to be proud to say, "Hey, I want to buy a PlayStation." Yeah, I I don't know I don't know where they're gonna go or what they're gonna end up doing or what other acquisitions are gonna happen, but um. I guess we. I guess we could. Uh, I don't know. We could. We could kind of end the episode on a. Because um, we know they're. Eh, everyone's not done acquiring things, and I think Microsoft jumped on these acquisitions. You know, before someone like Tencent or Google or Amazon could could get to them first. Because honestly, I think that's why these acquisitions are going to continue is to get get a lead and a a, a head up. On in, on increasing the value of Game Pass because uh, it's a service. That's what Microsoft is in this for now, and it's not the console war anymore. You know, when it when it comes to the games and the titles that are being made. So I kind of thought, if you agreed, sir, that maybe what are there any things off the top of your head that that sound like fun 
great acquisitions minus what we've already talked about uh, that maybe that Microsoft should or might make what you know maybe just like a wish list thing like IPs that we'd love to see come to Xbox. Uh, yes, I know we've gotten actually. a lot. <laughs> oh, okay. Got some stuff on the brain. Yeah, oh, we we can we can take a minute to look if you need to fish around for something here. Uh, I would like to see Xbox reach out to Take Two Interactive. Oh my god, I can't believe I didn't bring that up, dude. Because I'm I actually that's and let's get into that for just half a second, yeah, as we uh, as we wrap up, because that's actually a a big one. Yeah, um, isn't that uh, GTA? <laughs> Take two related. is Rockstar, related. it's Bioshock, yeah. Borderlands, Civilization, Grand Theft Auto, Mafia, Max Payne, Red Dead Redemption, <laughs> XCOM. <laughs> oh, man, and so many. The, oh, that's another Their net one. worth right now is $3.9 billion. That's it? That's it. Shit, I guess. I guess it's low because uh, like a, half of those titles you listed are not reg like concurrent cash cows at the moment like it's a nice catalog but i guess yeah net value it's not that's weird really i mean i grand theft Auto is the biggest the big one out of that um, well the, the other one, one still making on that is 2k oh yeah i mean sports, sports is games. always yeah yeah it's a regular annual cash cow sports games are yeah mm-hmm. But but next I don't know to that, why, the, but it it is. I, yeah, they, they, I don't. Yeah, uh, sports, I watch sports. I, get, I don't play sports on on my. Yeah, you know what's consoles. funny about that, Nick, is like, um, a lot of friends that I know that are heavily into sports. If they picked up a game system, they would play the sports that they're that they already love, being involved with. It was, it's a weird thing. You yeah, know what it, I mean? It makes no sense. I'm sorry. I play football every once in a while. I play basketball every once in a while. I don't want to play a game on those on those games. I want to if I'm going to I do know. it, I want to go out there and actually it, swing a bat. If I'm going I'm to do just, it, I want to actually dribble a ball or we, we need to find my my friend <laughs> into the ground because it's fun. <laughs> we need to we need to find a guest to come on here that that is passionate about uh, sports games and have them tell us like get into their brain. Like we have someone's why? passionate about sports games. He just doesn't talk is about Matt, it very often. Yeah. Is Matt really into yeah. the sports games more than yeah. watching sports? Matthew, chime in. It's a shame you're not on tonight. Gosh, no, I know he he's does play hear our this. he does play our racing games and stuff. But oh, I, racing, I know he's day, into racing. He played a lot of basketball games. He played mm-hmm. a lot of yeah. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Yeah, we'll have to pick his brain and and because like he he is the type that loves watching sports. You know, real real life sports, but then he also enjoys racing games and some of those. So I'm gonna pick his brain next time. Um, Nick, do you have any take two? That was that was a great take. I I, I would have been mentioning that one over anything else. I can't think of honestly. Well, take two okay, no. per, uh, recently purchased uh, Zynga. I heard. I remember or, or reading Zynga, or hearing or about that. Is. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, side note, let me, let me throw this out there. I think they're independent still. I don't think they're owned by anyone and it might be considered a crazy purchase. And I think there's a little bit of workplace (laughs) culture that could, could benefit from being under Microsoft's banner. I want to say Bioware. Are they owned by anyone else? I think they're independent. We'll do a quick check on that, but you know, drag, drag age. Yeah. Dragon Age, Mass Effect, Anthem, Bioware, right? Baldur's Gate, dra- you know, D&D games, that Bioware has been behind a lot of that. And Mass Effect over all of those, you know. Being yeah, Bioware is, yeah. Oh, shoot. All right, well, yeah. they're not going anywhere unless Microsoft buys up EA. <laughs> Could you imagine? They already, ha- I know, they already have a partnership with EA. And then another side note, um, Something that I hope to see, I don't think they're going to buy them up anytime soon, but Ubisoft is doing the EA thing. EA access for, you know, $4.99 a month by itself. They're not 
No, there's been no deal with Microsoft yet that I know of, but Ubisoft is doing a service called Ubisoft Plus. Probably, if they're smart, price it around the same as the A-axis. And but they're they're promising in their future Ubisoft Plus deal that you will get day and date releases of new games. So, like the latest Assassin's Creed, if you're subscribed to Ubisoft Plus, you will get it day one. Like Game Pass, they're kind of they're doing a little something different than EA Access because EA Access was a vault based thing where they're like, here, play our collection for five bucks a month. We'll eventually we'll give you early access, <coughs> not day one releases, but you'll get early access. Cause I got and uh mass <laughs> shameless plug back in the day. I did a playthrough of Mass Effect Andromeda and I got early access. I didn't get it day one, I still have to pay for the game. But Ubisoft is kind of switching up and going the the Game Pass route by offering all their first party titles coming out of Ubisoft as being day one releases available if you're subscribed. So they might make it ten dollars a month. I think that might not be smart. I think it's going to be really hard to swallow ten bucks a month on top of fifteen for Game Pass and Game Pass Ultimate or EA Access, all these things. But if they bundled it, if they made a deal with Microsoft and bundled ubisoft plus with ea play and game pass ultimate and they made it 17 bucks a month because right now game pass ultimate is 15 there's I, also I'd a pay, few other i'd pay two dollars more for ubisoft plus did you catch there's all that i, I want to hear your thoughts we're not talking about okay did you, hold on did you hear the ubisoft plus part i did okay i know you're trying to bypass because you're more intrigued by what you just read Go ahead, throw them out there. No, the we'll, Ubisoft we'll get... Plus, it's just... I would run into the same issue I have with uh, my streaming services for TV. I know. Well, that's that's why I mentioned, if you if you heard me, if they bundled it for a couple dollars more with Game Pass Ultimate, if they struck up some deal with Microsoft, mm-hmm. I might consider upgrading to get all of that in one deal. You know, the a la yeah. carte. The subscriber a la carte, you know, but anyway. Two other companies we didn't talk about that could be purchased by other companies, which would be badass. Okay. Namco Bandai. Oh, man. List list some recent titles, because there's a lot coming out of there that has come out of there, rather. Um, I'm trying to think of recent ones, because uh, recently, I know... Uh, Silly, cheesy, but it's an amazing game. Power, uh, Power Rangers, <laughs> Mighty Wolf from Power Rangers, <coughs> fighting game, the newest one. I forget the uh, the subtitle to that title, but that's actually a lot of fun. The Dragon Ball I games know. or Namco. Um, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. The like new Zena, game coming Zenaverse, out. And yeah, that is supposed to be the the end all be all world version of uh, uh, Dark Souls. Elden Ring. Oh, that's Namco from Bandai. through Namco Bandai. Uh-huh. Holy crap! That's Little a Nightmares huge coming. Namco Bandai. Oh, I love that series. Oh gosh, um, man, Pac Man. About... Uh. Oh yeah. Oh, some arcade classies. Ace Combat, Dark Souls. Um, D- well, the the Dark Souls franchise is through Namco Bandai. Mm-hmm. Holy crap, that would be a really decent Soul Calibur get. is Namco. Oh, man. That's a lot of... Oh, man, dude. Just the Dark Souls alone is, would be a huge get. There's a huge Galaga. fan base for that. <laughs> oh, um, man. Yeah. No, but the other one I was saying was... Uh, yeah, what's the other one? Cool, was... Uh, you Konami. intrigued me. Oh, okay. I mean, other than the Dead or Alive series, because I'm just not super familiar with the rest of Konami. I know. Remind me. I'm, I'm going to be stunned once you tell me. Right? Yep. I'm, I'm correct in that, right? Dead or uh, Alive? They've had stuff all throughout everything. Um, Probably a lot on Sega back in the day. <laughs> Metal Gear. Oh, you know, when I hear Metal Gear, I think Sony PlayStation. So that would also be a, an interesting twisted get because that's a, Silent an amazing Hill. Purchase. Oh, man. Bring that back. Revive it, Microsoft. Oh, Bomberman. 
dude, there's so many good horror games coming out this last year and a half. Need to play some more of those on our channel. Whew. Um, I'm trying to look for a whole list of these because I think that'd be important for you. Oh, and yeah, I mean, I love the series you listed so far, so that would definitely be something exciting if I heard them. Yeah, Metal Gear, that. Um, ah, Spider-Man, so. Contra, Castlevania. Um, they did a whole bunch of stuff during the Game Boy era. So there's some sports. There, yeah, Metal Gear, Bomberman, Castlevania series, mm -hmm. Silent Hill, a lot of Silent Hill, of course, a lot of Castlevania titles, Contra. <laughs> this is just what our listeners like to hear us uh, sifting through lists on our phones. Dude, no, it, they, they'd be cool. <laughs> they have no, I know. Um, yeah. when, when you think of uh, Konami, you think Ooh. all yeah. the games of... you grew up playing in the arcades. I was like, there's a lot of arcade stuff coming out of them, uh, coming from them. So that mm -hmm. would that would be kind of cool, too, dude. Absolutely. Well, and just the way the Xbox embraces the the indie games, those those oh, yeah. old uh, arcade games would fit in very, very well. Yeah, they dig out a lot of those, dude. Uh, Nicholas, um, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Uh, any concluding thoughts on the the gaming industry as a whole before we wrap up? Any any additional in the world? Where 2032, the world has been dominated by the, by the purchase wars. Only two companies remained. Microsoft, Sony, all others have been crushed. <laughs> you must pay oh, so your first born, ch born child to be able to play anything. Wait, so does Microsoft buy Nintendo? Oh, wait in the episode, right? <laughs> Not anytime soon. But could you imagine? N N Nintendo blew up when Mario backstabbed them. When Mario backstabbed them. <laughs> uh, Nick, we are we are coming to that point. Yeah, when we're getting silly and tired. No, 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 no. I'm I mean, I know you gotta work in the morning. I'm wide awake, but I don't want to keep my wife buried out in another room while we're recording. And I just figured we're an hour and a half, hour and twenty right now. <coughs> and it's 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 been a not dude, goodness gracious. No, but cough sounded serious. Stuff. We've been a non-stop talk because there's a lot of layers to the topic tonight that we covered. You're a right. lot. Layers like an onion. Little layers, sir. Um, but Nick, no, but what, yeah, anything you, else or yeah, no, no, no. Do you think that this purchase on either side will be good, bad, or ugly? Uh, the, the, the bungee Start one? with bungee. Good, bad, or ugly. <sighs> uh, I think Sony having played dirty in the past and maybe as a reaction to the Activision Blizzard craziness, Sony has the potential to make this deal a dirty one. But uh, even with their, their contract saying they have to be allowed to put it, put it where they want. That's what I'm saying is I'm saying, well, I'm saying Sony has the potential because we haven't seen it in writing yet. We don't officially know everything that's going on yet. Um, in the article I read when the news broke, um, Sony said it's our intention to keep them independent, right? So it's, it's not like I didn't feel like written in blood about it. And then Bungie, not not a quote, but in the article it said that the company as a whole, Bungie, hopes. They put the word hopes they're able to stay independent. And I was like, why would they put that in the article? It's not a quote, not a direct quote from any one person, but why would they say that unless there was a small amount of uncertainty? And I don't want to open that can of worms right now. I, I think Sony is smarter than that. 
and they know that by owning Bungie, they're going to benefit profit-wise by keeping it on. I mean, Microsoft benefited just fine keeping Minecraft on all platforms. So leave, leave. You know, I think I think it'd be a huge. I think it would be an unfavorable thing in the media for Sony to make a decision to pull Destiny 2 off of any other platform. I think it would be a detriment to the Sony name if they did that. And so I don't think they're dumb enough to make that move. What I'm worried about and, is the next IP that Bungie's been working on. We're probably not going to I know. See. I, I know. And you know what? Sony is smart enough. They see what Microsoft is doing. And Sony is more likely to make whatever anything new coming out of Bungie make it something something potentially exclusive. I don't think because they want to keep them independent, I don't because they 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 made that so clear. They are going to be an independent branch of SCI, so SEI, what Sony Entertainment or Incorporate, whatever. An independent branch, right? They they made that very clear that Sony doesn't want to make the water super dirty to the fan bases of Bungie, you know, because there will be an online outcry if they do. That doesn't mean like Microsoft that they can't make some future stuff pot potentially, potentially exclusive. Sony's always paid an extra little hand here, a little hand there to make something a timed exclusive. I don't think anything this, because they want to keep them independent. I don't think anything necessarily on the table in the future is going to be a permanent exclusivity, assuming they want to keep Bungie independent. And I don't think Bungie would have signed that deal because they, they struggled so much under the Activision thumbnail that I don't think they would have signed a deal with Sony if they weren't happy with whatever Sony was offering. Agree? Disagree? No, here's the crazy thing. Here's the crazy yeah. thing. Um, I've actually been noticing something weird. Um, playing Bungie, uh, playing Destiny 2. Um, yeah, when you get into a lobby and you're playing against PlayStation players, the server favors them in what way? Faster loading, um, or like what are we talking about? They that their their connection with the server is so much better that mm. it causes rubber banding, and uh, it looks like they're glitching all over the place. Mm. Sir, that's going to require some additional investigation. That sounds fishy. Sounds no. fishy, but I don't know. I don't know. I can't. Speak. And here's I the thing: speak on that. Man. I I can speak on this from experience. Um, before that started happening, every PlayStation player in group that we came across was utter garbage. <laughs> so I guess they need their, their one up, I guess. Ah, well, I was going to say, I think that speaks more to the PlayStation community necessarily than some dirty deal underground between Sony and Bungie. I think I'm not wrong. Um, an ex-cast member on our group even said as much that <coughs> that certain groups are friendlier uh, on Xbox and there's a lot of garbage can youth that are on PlayStation. But I, I don't want to dirty the waters one way or the other by making sure. an outright claim that all PlayStation players are awful because they're not. There's 100 million... The, at least <laughs> that no, are playing on so that side, playing their exclusives by themselves. I mean, you're not wrong. There's a lot less multiplayer, and even less now that Microsoft took Call of Duty away. It's not official. They still got the Warzone. They're not going to touch that. But anyway, Nick, we're we're digressing a little bit here. I know. We have to every once in a while. I know. We said we're wrapping up 15 minutes. No, I'm kidding. We only said that five minutes ago. You you had a good point to bring up about Bungie. Yeah. No, You're but, not wrong. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us for this long and drawn out spiel. episode of Gaming Bits, which mm -hmm. I left out at the bottom there for the live feed, but I'll put it in in the final edit. It's almost like it was nerdy news. 
anyway, we, uh, we should close out with just a couple little deets, you know. Um, just if you made it this far and you forgot what we said at the beginning, I want to say, guys, thanks for watching this episode. You can find us everywhere that podcasts are found. We're on that new channel, Nerdentials Podcast, on YouTube. Uh, if you go to Nerdentials Gaming on YouTube or just type in Nerdentials, you'll find all of this crap spread out across YouTube. You'll find it. Um, and like the <coughs> bottom of the screen... Ooh, I'm, I'm clipping out here in my arm. Ooh. Like the bottom of arm, Nick's bro. screen. Nick, the bottom of your screen. Can you point to the bottom where the website is on your screen? Yeah, right there. Yep. <laughs> you guys can find all our stuff, including reviews, news, and videos at nerdentialsmedia.com. Mm. That's right. And shout out to Ryan and Matthew. We missed you. Today so we much. missed you this week. Get you back. Soon. My loins cried out for you. I mean, yeah, our loins cried out. Oh, well, anyway, uh, guys, uh, we will return next week with hopefully some movie matters, TV talk, and more gaming news. Uh, right now, this is all me and Nick can do for the week. But thanks for joining us. And uh, you know oh. what, Nick? Yeah. No. Oh, one more thing. Go, Go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. I'll wait till afterwards. Oh, all right. Well, guys. For myself and Nick, this has been your Nerdy Essentials. And as always, gaming nerds, we'll see you on the other, on side. The other side. You purposely waited. <laughs>